The fastest way to buy Bitcoin in Australia from an exchange you can trust. Bitcoin.com.au Blockchain technology, it's clear we are seeing something quite revolutionary that's going to change our world. Recognition, I'm on a mission, I'm paying dues, I'm in position, I'm staying up, it's getting late, you're doing good, I'm doing great. It's a huge push into connecting the physical world with the blockchain. It's always a good idea for investors to make the trend the trend. You're doing good, I'm doing great. Hi, I'm Chris Masters Ma, and welcome to this week's episode of CoinCast TV. Tonight, we talk to an NYU professor who says blockchain is an arrow pointed right at the heart of the world's financial system. A former Nigerian president tells us how blockchain is cleaning up corruption in Africa. And we take a look at the technology that is clearing out online bots. Now for the Week in Blockchain with Kema Johnson. Thanks, Chris. Firstly, the market is looking promising as we're starting to see Bitcoin's price slowly creep past the 7,000 US dollar mark. But the rise may be short-lived after the North American Securities Administrators Association's latest update on Operation Crypto Sweep. The regulator has announced there are more than 200 ICOs under investigation. In the world of crypto, a private key is something you don't want to lose and crypto custodian Kingdom Trust has got your back. Thanks to insurance marketplace Lloyds of London, the company is providing insurance services to cover theft and the loss of key to their customers. In other news, a new report by PricewaterhouseCoopers has revealed that blockchain is still a focus at the C-suite level. According to the report, 84% of executives surveyed said their companies are actively involved with the technology. And the ASX is opening its doors to blockchain with YPB Systems gaining approval to run a token sale on the exchange. YPB has raised 3 million Australian dollars with strategic blockchain partners, First Growth Funds, Digital X and Blockchain Global. Back to you, Chris. You know, blockchain technology is becoming mainstream when courses are being taught at some of the world's leading business schools. The first course in the world was introduced at NYU, and the professor behind it is putting Wall Street on notice. NYU professor David Yermak is somebody the world of finance should really be listening to. In demand as a guest blockchain lecturer across the globe, he was the first person to teach the technology at a major university when he helped NYU set up its first blockchain course. And right now, he's telling Wall Street they need to stop fighting the technology or be left behind. I think they understand this is an arrow aimed at the heart of the financial system and they can either make peace with it, meet it on their own terms, or you know, continue to fight it through regulation and you know, public ridicule and so forth. It's hard to believe that only five years ago, you couldn't actually learn about blockchain at a university. Yermak changed all that when he helped NYU set up a course in cryptocurrencies to explain how the tech behind them works. It made NYU the first Ivy League school to teach its students about the rapidly changing technology. These days, you can learn about the blockchain at Oxford in the UK, and alongside NYU, Stanford, Princeton, Georgetown, Cornell, Duke, and MIT also offer courses in the US. And in Australia, you can now learn about blockchain at RMIT. This is a very important thing for us to be teaching because the financial system is changing quite quickly, and the jobs available to our students are very different than they were even five years ago. In the course I teach, it's really mostly about the blockchain. We don't sit around saying this coin is worth X, this one's worth Y, you know, which is a better investment. But we talk about how they work and how they're designed and where else the blockchain can be applied in, in non-financial uses. It makes sense that Wall Street would be threatened by blockchain. After all, its efficiency rests in getting rid of the middleman. That's why it's key for traditional institutions such as Wall Street to find a way to stay relevant, according to the professor. I think in the long run, the technology will win out and that banks are going to be transformed to the point that they look really very different and do very different things in the future. Some of them better and some of them probably not at all. Blockchain is set to change up every industry, according to Yermak, from food to logistics to government. 
It started already with iTunes changing up the music industry. Uber and Ola made ride sharing accessible and affordable. And Airbnb has completely changed the way we book accommodation too. I think that you're going to see much more peer-to-peer -peer commerce in what we call the sharing economy. It will make resources used much more efficiently, but above all, disintermediate, cut out the middleman who takes a cut for doing something that we now have the technology to do all by itself. Let's check in on the top cryptocurrencies of the week brought to you by Caleb and Brown. A look at the major coins. Bitcoin made a steady recovery this week, still a cry from a rebound, but the world's largest cryptocurrency is making a slow comeback. Internet of Things distributed ledger technology is racing along. The technology is being used in Volkswagen's digital car pass in 2019. One of last week's top cryptos, Nano, continues to rise. The digital currency is hodling impressive gains since its price spike last week. Korean smart contract platform Icon has seen its price almost double. The price jump could be due to the company's recent announcement of its plans to spend $5 million in a token buyback program. And now to Caleb and Brown's crypto spotlight of the week, Holochain. At just four months old, this distributed ledger technology is the talk of the crypto town as one of the most mentioned cryptocurrencies trending at the moment. Up next, we'll see whether blockchain can play a role in cracking down on the blood diamond trade in Africa. You're doing good, I'm doing great. Leonardo DiCaprio's film Blood Diamond shone a light on the corruption that's damaging Africa's natural resources. Child labor, conflict zones, and poverty. These devastating images have filled our screens and newspapers for decades. But could blockchain change all that? Every year, African countries receive billions of dollars of foreign aid. And yet, three quarters of the population are still living on less than $2 a day. And while the continent is rich in minerals and resources, this wealth fails to flow down to its people. The former Nigerian president says blockchain could change all this by reducing corruption. Blockchain can help in the area of corruption because if blockchain uh, deals with the quantity and the quality of what you are taking from source to the, the receiving end, you know what it is, you know, and the payment can, in fact, be in a way that you cannot be tampered with. This would completely change how resources are allocated and how wealth is distributed, meaning all blood diamonds could be accounted for. If you want to certify a supply chain to make sure there's not no conflict minerals involved, no child labor involved, those kind of things, blockchain being the, the distributed ledger that it is, has that, that potential. Africa is already embracing blockchain, whether it's farming in Kenya, cobalt mining in South Africa, or the Democratic Republic of Congo's diamond trade. And Africans are trading crypto too. Nigeria is in the top 10 countries trading Bitcoin, with 258 million US dollars being traded. And South Africa isn't far behind rounding out the top 10. I think with blockchain, we're still only coming to the end of the beginning in terms of realizing what it can do for the world and what it can do for Africa. Digital currency could also give people an identity, no longer needing official documents to open an account. Blockchain has great potential to assist um, governments and individuals in addressing challenges of such things as not having uh, a birth certificate and therefore not being able to open a bank account. I want to create wealth for the farmer, for the, the, the market woman, for the woman who, 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 who is trading, for the young entrepreneur. And I think blockchain can do that. Blockchain may even be the ray of hope Africa needs to progress economically and socially. In the volatile world of cryptocurrency, the emergence of stable coins has been a key trend as investors look for safety. 
Let's deep dive into the data and numbers with Data Dan. The rise of stable coins in the age of digital volatility. In the last two years, we've seen the likes of Ethereum, Bitcoin, and indeed Ripple test the proverbial stomachs of even the most enthusiastic of digital currency proponents. This has given rise to stable coins. Now, what are these stable coins, you might ask? Stable coins effectively track fiat currencies such as the US dollar, the euro, the Japanese yen, and in some cases, physical gold. Fiat currencies, of course, are legal tender backed by sovereign governments around the world. However, we've seen with some fiat currencies, the likes of Venezuela, Zimbabwe, and even World War II Germany, have been able to devalue their own currencies significantly by printing too much of it, giving rise to hyperinflation. So what are three coins we like here at Coincast with respect to stable currencies? Well, the first one is Haven. Haven is two coins. The first is a transactional coin called Nomus, and the second is a reserve coin called Haven. Effectively, for every dollar spent on goods and services, there's a dollar in reserve. The second coin we like is the DAI coin. The DAI coin tracks the US dollar, but uses blockchain Ethereum technology, a pure crypto in every sense of the word. And the final coin we like is Tether. Tether tracks the US dollar next to major currencies. Effectively, whatever the US dollar does, Tether follows. Effectively, the USD of digital currencies, if you'd like. So if volatility is not your game, you might want to consider a stable coin. The co-founder of Billion Dollar Unicorn and massively successful comparison website, Finder, is now obsessed with crypto and blockchain. The tech genius, Fred Shabesta, shares how he thinks the technology will shape our future. He clearly knows a good thing when he sees it. At just 26, Fred Shabesta became one of Australia's youngest self-made millionaires with the sale of his first startup. He went on to create the hugely successful comparison website finder.com.au, now estimated to be worth around a billion dollars, making Shabesta the co-founder of a bona fide unicorn company. Now he's turned his talents to blockchain and crypto. So how does he see the technology shaping our future? Mums and dads can expect to see not much change at all. The mums and dads think they're gonna really not even know that they're using blockchain. It's gonna get so easy to use. It's gonna swipe with your finger. You know, it's gonna, it's gonna move money, move cryptocurrency. You're gonna pay bills with it. You're not even gonna realize uh, what's going on. It's gonna be so smooth and simple. They won't even know they're using the blockchain. Shabesta, who hosts a daily crypto talk show, says millennials will be more aware of the changes. They're going to just be used to using that technology and they'll want to invest in that. You know, they don't want to invest in property. They don't want to invest in these, you know, in BHP. That's like, like old school, digging up, digging up fossil fuels and selling them to people. Uh, that's not what they want to be involved with, right? In general, we're going to experience a lot more transparency and trust in areas that we couldn't use or do before. You know, things like voting, uh, micropayments, uh, money transfers um, from overseas. Um, you know, I think there's a new investment class, so they might have a part of, it, part of it in their investment portfolio. The entrepreneur says there'll be all kinds of new jobs and experiences for people to have. Things like blockchain university degrees, engineers that specialise in the technology, and politicians that lobby for blockchains to be created with governance in mind an area that's going to be a huge blockchain trend going forward. Really when there is a political situation and everyone wants to put in their vote, I think that's where you're going to see in the future a lot more governance taking place with the blockchain. It's an incredible use. But how will it change the way we do things like transfer money and make mortgage repayments? I think in terms of banking and, and money transfers, it, again, it's going to be super smooth and super simple. You're not even going to realise that you're using blockchain. You're not even going to realise that you're using these technologies. They're just going to remove a lot of the intermediaries um, in between. And specifically what you're going to see is, is going to be a reduction in fees because it's just less and less middlemen in between. Let's take a look at the top ICOs to watch brought to you by CTIA. Thanks, Chris. Firstly, offline retail is getting a makeover as Carry Protocol turns your transactions into a commodity. Its ICO will close next week. Proxius has also finished its ICO, with the excess token already listed on several exchanges. 
calling itself the WordPress for the blockchain, the Beta 2 version is already available. Taking a look now at ICOs coming up, Open Entertainment Economy Network, Bolt, is preparing for a token sale. It's one of the first dApps to be built on the Zillica protocol and is seeking to raise 12 million US dollars. And blockchain could help protect your pension thanks to the Acropolis project. With a hard cap set at 25 million US dollars, Acropolis is scheduled for a token generating event in September. Back to you, Chris. Coming up, the real life spam and bot traffic fighter. And we hit the pavement to find out what you really think about blockchain. That's next. Human Protocol is an AI algorithm that's challenging Google. Its founder, Eli Kaduri, spoke with our reporter, Heidi Cuthbert, about how their technology is clearing out the online bots. And I'm joined by Eli Kaduri, the CEO of Human Protocol from San Francisco. And if I can, can you start by telling me, Eli, what is Human Protocol? Yeah, so the Human Protocol is about this bigger story of how do we tokenize human labor? How do we have one person or one group of people do the work, um, another group evaluate the quality of the work, and then finally uh, some independent uh, neutral party actually do payment. And so what we've done is devise the system by which uh, trust is reduced dramatically in the ecosystem. And that's valuable because if you're trying to recruit labor from all over the world, people who don't know each other, who may not speak the same language, who are not in the same country. You need some way to enforce uh, fairness, to enforce quality, and to enforce um, satisfaction. And so that's really what the problem of the human protocol uh, attempts to solve. Now the first application on the human protocol is H Capture. It sounds kind of confusing, uh, and yet you're competing with Google. Can you explain this to us? So HCAPTCHA is the first application of the human protocol, which is a mechanism for tokenizing human labor. And I'll explain what that means later, but HCAPTCHA very simply is a way to compensate websites for the work that their visitors do when they're answering a CAPTCHA. So when they log in and they have to click on the car, now that work, which actually is being harvested by Google at present to power their machine learning business, is instead available for any machine learning company to bid on and for the websites to get paid. So in terms of those labor hours, can you put a figure on it? How much money are we talking about? Well, they're giving away about uh, 100 years of labor every day. And the dollar value is somewhere in a range of a dollar per 100 answers to a dollar per 1,000 answers. So with about a billion answers a day going through that system, it's actually quite a lot of money. So what's in it for the website owner? Well, the website owner is benefiting from HCAPTCHA in several ways. The first is that they are actually keeping out bots and spam, just like they would with any other CAPTCHA. And the second is that they're actually getting compensated for the work of their visitors um, using tokens. And this is a huge advantage because previously they were simply giving away that work for free. So tell me, Eli, what's next for Human Protocol? So we expect to have a full reference implementation out this year for people to build on. And we are working very hard with many different partners and customers to uh, scale this out to the world. Because fundamentally, for something like HCAPTCHA, pretty much every website on the planet could use it. So it's really a question of how do we bring that story to the world. Thank you very much. The CEO of Human Protocol, Eli Kaduri, back to you. Let's take a look at the week ahead with our reporter, Tessa Dempster. Thanks, Chris. Just one year after its launch, tensions are rising between Bitcoin Cash's main developers, Enchain, and Bitcoin ABC. The clash comes ahead of a scheduled hard fork for November. But as miners have the final say on hash power, all eyes will be on the major mining pools. From crypto collectibles to a German art museum, CryptoKitties are getting their very own art exhibition. 
showcasing the inner workings of blockchain technology in real time, the art exhibition is scheduled to open over the weekend at the ZKM Centre for Art and Media. Looking to Singapore, there's been speculation as to whether the country is considering using blockchain to sell tokenized securities. The Singapore Exchange and the Monetary Authority of Singapore would use the technology to swap money for assets on a smart contracts network. Now looking at conferences, we're off to Sydney for the Crypto Investment and ICO Summit. And Berlin Blockchain Week kicks off on the 5th of September in Germany. Back to you, Chris. Thanks, Tessa. There's a lot of speculation about Bitcoin and whether it'll one day go mainstream. The best way to get a sense of the answer is to hit the streets and to see what people have to say. Most people lead busy lives. There's barely enough time to pay the bills, do the banking, and put food on the table. In amongst all the noise, has cryptocurrency hit the mainstream? I have a vague idea what it is, but it's hard to put it into words. If you're investing in Bitcoin, you should be willing, or cryptocurrencies in general, you should be willing to have that money to lose, since it's not really based on any like fundamental finance things, because it doesn't produce income. It's basically similar to gold in a sense. Do you think the disruption that, that cryptocurrency is creating is a good thing? Yes, I, I mean, it, the, the world we live in now is all about competitive markets, globalization, everything else. So there's no stepping back from it anymore. Everything is pretty much competitive nowadays, so more competition is better. And if you get big corporation or big banks to compete more about it, then yes, that's why we want to have the competition the most. Okay, so it's a mixed bag of crypto knowledge on the street. Let's ask someone who's used to handling money. The blockchain is a technology which uh, verifies uh, transactions and um, what it does is it removes a middleman such as the bank. So it allows me to transact with you directly without involving, for example, the bank. Yep, so David definitely knows what crypto and blockchain is. He's an accountant who specializes in it. The obvious question is, do I have to pay tax on the, on the profit that I made? Absolutely. <laughs> and what do the guys in the startup space have to say about it? But we all know that mum knows best. And this mum says women need to make the effort to learn more about the technology. Yeah, it's really important that women know about this and that they actually benefit and can potentially profit. And they pass that information onto their kids. <laughs> it's kind of like this technology money that travels through blockchain. And once it's there, you kind of raise it. You can buy it and sell it. And I guess that's about it. So there you have it. The people have spoken and they do know about blockchain, but maybe there's still a way to go. Thanks for joining us. Find us on your screens every Friday at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You'll also find us on Apple TV, just look for the CoinCast TV tile, or catch some of our stories on the Wall Street Journal online. If you want more information about the projects on tonight's show, please visit coincasttv.com. I'm your host, Chris Masasma. Until next week, keep hodling.